What's up everyone? Matt Kane here from Kane's Corner. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you follow on Instagram, Kane's Corner Sports and Maddie Kane105. And make sure you follow me on Twitter, also Maddie Kane105. Again, make sure you subscribe, follow on Instagram, follow on Twitter. Let's get on to the program. Welcome back into Kane's Corner. I'm Matt Kane here to bring you the hottest and latest sports topics. Uh, Today, I have a really good show for you guys. We had some more news come in. I'm very excited. You know, I said we were in the dog days of sports last week. Well, it kind of opened up. Kyler Murray signed a new deal. Kevin Durant, reportedly, the Boston Celtics are interested in him and already threw him a deal that was declined by the Nets. And then I got some quarterback tier lists uh, later in the show to kind of end it off on a a very fun note. But before I get into it, make sure you hit the subscribe button. To the right of me right now is the list of things that we're going to be going through. Like I said, we got the jersey of the day, uh, Kyler Murray, Kevin Durant, and then some tier lists in the dog days of sports, you know, that July time. Uh, NFL is opening up, so I'm very excited because that's going to start six months of amazing amazing nfl content which will be mostly my show uh with some sprinkles of other sports jersey of the day today i said i got a new jersey um and then i posted on instagram hey we got a new jersey any guesses um that jersey is steph curry you know my love for steph curry um throughout the show i had to rock it i had to get it um, it has finals on the back. One sec. Finals on the back. Uh, nice Steph Curry jersey. Um, I like this this uh, design because it's got the it's got the the bolts on the side. So I got it from DHgate, great website to get fake jerseys from. Um, but it was only like what eighteen dollars, fifteen dollars. So I'm pretty happy with uh, how it came out, and and I had to rock it today. It's not nothing. Nothing's going on with Steph Curry. There's no Steph Curry news. You know, sometimes I do Aaron Rodgers, but there is no Steph Curry news. I just had to rock it because it's it's rather new and and it's just adding on to my jersey collection. So that's the jersey of the day. Heading into Kyler Murray, he signed a new contract last Thursday, uh, an extension worth up to two hundred and thirty point five million, with about one hundred five million guaranteed at the signing and one hundred sixty million guaranteed for. An injury if he gets hurt so yesterday as we're watching you know NFL starting training camps we're watching all of that and we see Kyler Murray's contract be leaked the thing that's leaked about it is the new contract mandates four hours of weekly film study I think it's interesting because that's not on any other contract that is not on Roger's contract. To what I know, that's not on Roger's contract. That's not on Brady's contract. That's not on uh, Lam- well, Lamar doesn't have a contract yet. That's not on Dak's contract. That's not on anyone's contract. On uh, contract. So I thought that was interesting. People are freaking out about it. I, I, to me, what it sounds like is all Kyler has to do is four hours a week to watch football. To watch the opponent. Watch the opposing defense. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Obviously, I'm not an NFL quarterback. I've never played football. Uh, so take it as you want. You know, Someone in the comments said I don't have a voice because I never played football. I think that's funny and I think I would easily roast the, them in a debate. But take it as you want. I've never played football. I don't know how you know, quarterbacks... I mean, I know how they watch film, but I don't know how how in-depth they really get. You know, I heard of Aaron Rodgers watching film. I've heard of Joe Burrow watching film. Tom Brady watches film. But then I heard quarterbacks don't watch film. Ben Roethlisberger, I don't think Brett Favre watched a lot of film. Kyler, I heard, doesn't really watch a lot of film. So I don't know what it is, but at the end of the day, it's it's four hours of a whole week. It's four hours and seven days. I think he can get it done. I think he can make it work because he's getting paid a ton of money. And I'm not going to say he's overpaid because I hate when people say that. I used to be a guy who said, oh, Dak Prescott was overpaid. I would say that. But 
I've come to realize that the teams have two choices. Choice number one, pay the guy. You pay him what he wants. Sure, it's big money, but uh, the the market changes, you know? Lamar's going to get a new contract. That's going to be bigger than Kyler's. Justin Herbert's going to get a new contract. That's going to be bigger than Lamar's. Burrow might be bigger than Herbert's, vice versa. So the market changes, and choice number one is just to pay the guy. Pay the guy, pay the guy and, and get five more years of, of greatness or however good he is. Your other choice is to trade the guy. Trade the guy, release the guy, whatever. Now, that you're just moving backwards in that case. See, if the Cardinals traded Kyler Murray, they didn't give him a contract, they let him hold out, they didn't have Kyler Murray next year. What they just did is they went backwards. They went back into a rebuild. Now, Kyler Murray was a long-awaited, was long-awaited for the Cardinals organization. They went through Carson Palmer, then immediately to Josh Rosen, who was a bust, and then to Kyler. So, you either go backwards, you have to draft a new guy, you're going back into a rebuild process, that guy's probably not going to be good for the next two years, you know, and then, again, the Cardinals are a good, they have talented roster, they're not going to get a Bryce Young or a CJ Stroud, so the Cardinals had two choices, sign the guy, or disrespect him to the point where he wants out, and you're back into a rebuild. See, the Cardinals catered way too much about around Kyler to go back into that rebuild. So I think signing Kyler was the only thing that they could do and that they should do. I would have, heck, I would have signed Kyler way before all of this. I would have signed Kyler when he wanted it because that's what happens. Quarterbacks are the biggest piece of a football organization. They have the most impact. And you need a good quarterback to get to the Super Bowl or else it all goes downhill. So, Kevin Durant, he stays in the news. You know, he actually just downloaded TikTok too, which I thought was very interesting. Um, but he always stays in the news somehow. You know, I, I call him the Aaron Rodgers of the NBA world. You know, a guy who, who's in the news and probably in the news because he wants, he wants to be respected. He's kind of being a diva. He wants to be traded, whatever. So Kevin Durant, of course, we talked about this. He had a trade request uh, four weeks ago, about four weeks ago. And really who emerged were the Suns, the uh, Heat, and um, the Raptors emerged. Now a new team has emerged. That has been the Boston Celtics. Now Boston apparently sent them a deal that included all-star forward Jalen Brown as the centerpiece. And I believe Derek White, uh, maybe an Al Horford and, or another piece, and then first-round picks to acquire, just to just to acquire Kevin Durant. Now, granted, Kevin Durant is a top-three player. I believe he's number two, right behind Giannis. But he's a top-three player. But that is still a very dumb move if Boston tries to get rid of Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum for Kevin Durant. See, the Boston Celtics are at a perfect place right now. They just acquired Malcolm Brogdon, which I believe was their one piece that they were missing. They were missing a true point guard. They acquired Malcolm Brogdon. Are you really going to give all that up to just to get Kevin Durant? See, that's what I don't get. I don't get why teams, yes, it's Kevin Durant, but I don't get why teams will blow up their rosters just to acquire this guy. The NBA is a star-driven league. I will say that 100%. We never, We don't really see stars... Uh, be this impactful to a team in any other sport. And, you know, if you want to win, you have to acquire stars. But seriously, Golden State Warriors, do you think they're going to get rid of their whole farm system just for Kevin Durant? Do you think the Boston Celtics should get rid of what they've been working on, their team chemistry, everything that they built just to get Kevin Durant? See, we saw Kevin Durant go... Get James Harden on his team. Get Kyrie Irving on his team. That didn't work out. Obviously, there's multiple different things going in there, but that didn't work out. So why are teams trying to blow up their franchise just to acquire Kevin Durant? That is something I won't get. And if I was a GM, I would call. I'd call. 
the Nets. And I'd say, hey, what do you want for Kevin Durant? What would you want on my team for Kevin Durant? And let's say I'm the Celtics GM. I'm uh, Brad Stevens. And they tell me, yeah, I want Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum as the centerpiece. Hang that phone up. Hang that phone up because that's not worth it. It's not worth it to get rid of chemistry for Kevin Durant. Now, if you're a team like the Philadelphia 76ers, who aren't the best team, obviously Joel Embiid is a baller. Tyrese Maxey's getting up there. James Harden, James James Harden's James Harden. You know, he's not peak James Harden, but he's James Harden. That's a team that I think can get Kevin Durant. They can afford it because that they, they are desperate to get to the finals and they need to pull that trigger for Joel Embiid's case for uh, many other players who are in their prime. They need to pull that trigger to try to get to the championship. I wouldn't blame them. But Boston, who just was in the championship, no. Golden State just won it, no. The Heat, I don't think any trade will, will go down unless it's like a 10-team trade, honestly, for the Heat. So I, I don't know. But that's my two cents on Kevin Durant. I don't think he's going to be moved. I still don't think he's going to be moved. I think Brooklyn, bite the bullet. More like Kevin Durant biting the bullet. Bite the bullet. He'll play. He's under contract for four more years. It's nothing to sit out for. And he loves the sport of basketball. He's not going to sit out. And he's not going to sit out when he has his buddy. He's still got a buddy, Kyrie. So that's my two cents. Kevin Durant's staying in that. I believe so. And if he's traded, well, I'll, I'll be damned. So I saw this the other, the other day, Monday. Um, Colin Coward, The Herd. Of course I watch it. Uh, I was the intern for them back in February, March. So I watched the show, and I thought this was interesting, and I thought this was an idea to kind of not take a and do my own twist on it. Obviously, I'm, I am I definitely think different than, than Colin. So Colin had Mike Sando, who works for The Athletic, um, and he released, Mike Sando released the annual um, tier list for quarterbacks. So I thought this was interesting. And I really looked, obviously I gave you guys my top 10. That doesn't align with the tiers. You know, the tiers are different. They're, they're weighted different and I'll explain why. So I kind of took that and uh, I ran with it. Um, I ran with kind of the format that Mike Sando did and the, and the athletic. Obviously they had multiple different executives. They had um, multiple different uh, league staff and, and, and different voices give their opinion on this. Me compared to them is, is absolutely nothing, but I thought might as well I give you my tier list and this is actually going to be in order. So I have the tiers. I took similar to what they had. So tier one, that is a player who is a consistent winner for their team. Keyword is consistent. They consistently win for their team and I believe that they can be Super Bowl contenders because of their impact on the team. Okay, number two is a not as consistent winner. They're still winners for their teams and they're still the biggest piece of their team really but they're not as consistent as the guys i have in one i still believe that most of these guys some of these guys are super bowl contenders i'll go through that um but that's my two all right my three which i just realized i didn't mark three but who cares they're starters who need help around them to win they can't elevate a team enough to win the super bowl or to win games Obviously, sometimes they have monster games, but you get what I mean. And then fourth is kind of a, a place for everyone else. I call it, they call it the unproven in vets, so that's what I'm doing. Unproven players or veterans who won't start all 17 games. That's pretty much what they did too. So those are my tiers, and these are for all 32 starters, including uh, Jimmy Garoppolo and Trey Lance. I, I believe it's all 32. That would make sense. So these are all 32 starters including the 49ers conundrum, Jimmy G, Trey Lance. Okay, starting with number one, these are the consistent winners for their teams. I believe all these guys are Super Bowl uh, contenders. They could take their team to a Super Bowl, and I have them ranked that way. Okay, number one, maybe this guy won't take their team to a Super Bowl as much as the third guy, but this is Aaron Rodgers. I believe there's no other place to put Aaron Rodgers because consistency is what Aaron Rodgers has been in the past two years. Like I said, a back-to-back -back MVP. Take it or leave it. I think he's very close to the guy in second.
but he can win you games. He can rally a team, and he gets it done consistently. I mean, think about the last three seasons that the Packers have had. They've all been 13 wins. Don't comment about the playoffs if you won't talk about his regular season, too. Okay, second in that consistent winner for team rank, I have Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes had a down year last year, still a good year, but he had a down year last year. I still believe that he is his second best quarterback in the league. He's his talent is remarkable. He he ha- can throw it anywhere you want him to throw. And he, what he can do is he could take your team to a Super Bowl. When he first started, his first year starting, that MVP year, he pretty much he was overtime away from being in the Super Bowl. The next year he won the Super Bowl. The year after that, he made it to the Super Bowl. Lost to Tom Brady. I still think he 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 can take his team to a Super Bowl. Tyreek Hillless or not. Tom Brady is third on this list. Tom Brady's a pure winner. I wouldn't be shocked if they win the Super Bowl next year. I wouldn't be shocked if they're the number one seed next year. Easy for me. Tom Brady is number three in that list. Number four, I have Josh Allen. We saw what Josh Allen can do. I think he he's a winner. He can win you games. And he's consistent. We saw Josh Allen last year. I think Josh Allen this year is going to have a monster year, potentially MVP. I think he'd be I think he's my pick for MVP. But he, he's gonna have a monster year, I believe. And he's gonna win the Buffalo Bills probably the most games in the NFL. Okay, number five, this is where it kind of gets it kind of gets a little shaky, you know? You where where are you gonna go from here? Herbert, Stafford, Burrow, anywhere else? Lamar, Deshaun. Number five, I have Joe Burrow. And here's the thing about Joe Burrow that I think is is ahead of Justin Herberts, Matt Stafford, Russell Wilson. See, the thing about Joe Burrow is he was a most sacked quarterback. Wrap your head around this. He was a most sacked quarterback, but he had the best completion percentage last year. But he made it to the Super Bowl last year. That offensive line was shockingly overrated shockingly nobody wanted to talk about that offensive line and how they allowed all those sacks to joe burrow so the fact that joe burrow was a most sack quarterback with the best completion percentage and was in the super bowl is mind-boggling to me i don't think i'm ever going to wrap my head around that and for people that want to say joe burrow is overrated i don't think they can wrap their heads around that the reason why i have joe burrow at five here is because i believe that he has the best intangibles behind Tom Brady in the league. Intangibles meaning what you can't measure. That's clutchness for me. That's what you can do on a third and fourth down, what awareness you have in the pocket, out of the pocket, when to get out of the pocket, etc. Joe Burrow is 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 a marvel and I think he's going to be one of the best best players in the league in the next 5 years. And once Tom Brady retires, I think that he's going to be the closest thing that we see to Tom Brady. That's my opinion. Don't hate on it. You know, obviously it's not it's not the it's not a hot take, but I I would say it's kind of a warm take. Okay, after Joe six in this tier, which I'll remind you is consistent winner for team, consistent. Okay, at six I have Matt Stafford. Now Matt Stafford just came off a of Super Bowl year. You know, maybe you're thinking, oh, Matt Stafford should be above Joe Burrow. He should be above Josh Allen. Well, here's the thing about Matt Stafford that I took into some some account. That defense was amazing. Okay. Cooper Cup was amazing. And Matt Stafford, yes, he elevated Cooper Cup. He elevated that offense, that tremendous offense. But I don't think the Rams would have gotten I don't think the Rams would have made the Super Bowl without that defense. There were some games where we saw Matt Stafford lackluster. You know, he threw a ton of picks. He wasn't that good. Um, so I got Stafford there. I think Stafford is. I think Stafford's better on my top ten list just because of the talent he has and how he could throw the ball. But when I'm talking about tiers on quarterbacks and how, whether I think that they're, I guess they they can elevate their team. How they elevate their, it. This is basically on their impact. Okay, and I think Joe Burrow has a bigger impact than Matt Stafford. After Stafford, I have Justin Herbert. Now, the thing about Herbie, Herbie, uh, you know, he hasn't been to the playoffs. So I think that has to play in some account. I know he's a baller, and I love Justin Herbert. I love watching him play, but that has to take into some account. He hasn't been to the playoffs. And it's like, sure, the, the Ra- Raiders game was amazing, you know, 
he was the only reason why they were in that game. But there were some games where he looked, he didn't look that good. He didn't look that composed. He made mistakes. So I got Herbert there. And then finally, to end this number one list, I have Russell Wilson. I still believe Russell Wilson can win you a Super Bowl. I don't think that's changed. Uh, he's been a top five, pretty much a top five quarterback prior to last year. So you heard my rant on him last episode, two episodes ago. So nothing's really changed there. Okay, heading into number two, the second tier. These are not as consistent winners for their teams, but I still believe that they could be a Super Bowl contender. And some of these quarterbacks can elevate you to a Super Bowl. I'll tell you which ones I think. So, okay, first I have Deshaun Watson. It's really tough to to grade him. It's really tough. But basically, he he balled out on the Texans. So, like, he's not going to win at his team every game just because of him. But he balled out on the Texans. And they won some games because of him. That's where the consistent comes into play. You know, it was kind of consistent, not as consistent. So I got him there. Uh, second in this tier, I have Lamar Jackson. It was tough. I honestly uh, considered putting Lamar first. I think that he can elevate his team to a Super Bowl. I still believe he's a really good quarterback. But the reason why I have him here is is just because I don't think he he has the the impact. Well, he he has impact because he's a pretty he's he's a guy that teams need to look at when they're they're putting notes on him. But I don't know. You can honestly put him at one. I want to be uh, upset about that. After this, I have Dak Prescott. The guy's just not consistent. That's it. Um, I don't believe Dallas is a Super Bowl Super Bowl team, in my opinion. Derek Carr. Derek Carr is the almost one of the most underrated. He's with Kirk Cousins as one of the most underrated quarterbacks in the league. Uh, he's a baller. I think the Raiders can be a Super Bowl team. I got him there. And after this, I have Kyler. Kyler's just not a cons- not consistent. That's his only thing I have against him. And then I have Jimmy G. Jimmy G can win you. Jimmy G can win you any game. Like it- it's remarkable because Jimmy G's not that talented, but he can win you any game. I have to put him in that list. Okay, next is starters. Tier number three: starters who need help around them to win. I'm not gonna go so much in depth with these next two tiers because they're not as interesting players. So I'll just list off: Kirk Cousins, Jalen Hurts, Matt Ryan, Carson Wentz, Mac Jones, Ryan Tannehill. Baker Mayfield, Jameis Winston, Jared Goff. I believe that all those quarterbacks, if they had a really good team around them, a great defense, great weapons, um, and a great offensive line, they could get the job done. They could get you to the playoffs. They can win you games. Um, Yeah, I'm not going to go too much in depth with those. And then finally, unproven or vets who won't start all 17 games. I'll go with the unproven first because that's kind of what the huge chunk I have up to Trey Lance there. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, I think he's the most unproven quarter. He's the best unproven quarterback in this list. And then I have Tua, Davis Mills. He balled out last year. I, I really wish I could have put him over Tua. I just couldn't muster it. Zach Wilson, Justin Fields. I think those two quarterbacks can make a very big jump this year. I don't know if they will, but they have the ability to make that big jump. And, and you know, if the Bears didn't suck, if the Jets weren't the Jets, I would be more comfortable saying that they can make a they're gonna make a big jump but i just can't trey lance very interested to see him i'm very interested i do believe that he can get his team to the playoffs but i haven't seen much so i can't really put him in that category mitch trubisky mitch trubisky i don't think he's gonna start all 17 games he might start for the steelers honestly i would say pick it um get him right in the throw him right into the ring but I, he I'll just say if I had a bet on it, I feel like I'm more heading towards Trubisky because I really haven't had any, heard any Kenny Pickett big news. Uh, Marcus Mariota, I honestly don't think he's going to start all 17 games. I believe uh, they're either going to be so bad that they want to throw Desmond Ritter in or Mariota is going to be so bad that if they want to throw Ritter in. Either or, um, I think Ritter will see the will get a start at least two times uh, this year. Danny Dimes. Danny Dimes is awful. Drew Locke and Danny Dimes, I won't comment on. They're just awful. They don't. They bel- They belong in their own tier. I'll say that. Boy, that was fun. I, I wish I could have more time to really explain all those. I just I don't want to have a long show today. I'm trying to hit that 25 mark, 26 mark, uh, and keep it really, keep it really cool for you guys. Don't make this too long for all my viewers. But that is going to be it for Kane's Corner. Thank you for watching. If you look to the right of me, you missed anything you want to go back on, I have the timestamps right here. We talked some Kyler Murray. We talked some Kevin Durant. Had some rants in there. And then we did more fun, more tier lists. 
Uh, I love doing tier lists. If you guys want to see more, make sure you let me know. Uh, and hit that subscribe button. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Uh, I appreciate all you guys. Um, a lot of cool stuff coming out. Um, yeah, I, I did a... Uh, I was on sneakers. Um, I was on another podcast. I'm totally blanking out what it is. Sneakers and Hoops podcast, I think is what it's called. Uh, that should be coming out very soon. But until next time... Guys, I appreciate it. We're gonna get we're gonna try to get more guests on. We're gonna try to make it a little more fun while the NFL season is finally getting underway. See you next time.